Hi everybody, this is uh, my second episode on uh, the new updates in uh, Premiere Pro uh, 2015.3. The latest kind of major update in Premiere here. It's, it's big enough that they make you save a new project file. If you open up a new, if you open up an older project file, they'll make you save it as the new project file. So it's, it's a significant update. In one episode, I, sh I showed the proxy workflow, which is really, really nice, really quick, really easy. They probably have some little bugs they need to work out, but it is, for the most part, a really good workflow, uh, workflow right now. It works really nicely. But on this one, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the, use the new HSL secondary color corrector inside their Lumetri panel. This is incredibly easy. It's really powerful. They pulled this over from speed grade or the engine and it works really smoothly. I'm going to uh, basically go to uh, my hard drive here and, and bring in just, just going to bring in one clip to kind of do some color correction and show you how powerful this thing is. I'm going to choose a couple clips here that have some green in it. So I'm going to import some because uh, we're going to show you one thing that it really does nicely here. I've got some red footage here. I'm going to double click on one. Let's find uh, a couple clips here. We're going to we're going to use this one and I'm going to use this one as well. Okay, so in my timeline here, I've got a couple clips that's red footage. I'm going to put this in a quarter so it will play back quickly. And one thing if you're going to be doing color correction, if you're using like raw data, you can actually go under the red controls and uh, change things like this needs a little ISO boost. So I select the clip, go up to effect controls and click over on the master clip, which brings open the red settings. I'm going to turn my tint to zero, so it kind of gets back to the regular color there. And the, the camera actually shot on, and I'm actually going to go to, and I'm going to go to ISO, and I'm going to make this a little bit more sensitive. Let's go to 640. There we go, and that boosts it up a little bit more, gives me a little bit more to work with. Okay, let's get into the color mode here. So I'm going to go into color. And within the color mode here, what we've got is our Lumetri panel over here. I've got another tutorial on on all the Lumetri panel here, color correction, which kind of goes through all the basics when they added this back on their last big update. But one thing they've added is right here, this HSL secondary. If you click on that there, it'll open up this HSL secondary panel here. What this is doing is it's giving you the option of correcting a very specific color vector within your image. So say you just want to work on greens alone or blue alone, like up in the sky here or something like that. Uh, that was so this gives you that option. I'm going to select my clip here so it brings up the Lumetri panel here. And I'm going to move over to the secondary panel. I'm going to open this up just a little bit here so we have a little bit more room. All right, over here I've got my Lumetri scopes open. If you want to do some uh, color balancing and color grading, just make sure that you're accurate. But what I'm going to do here is we've got this little key area here. And what this key is going to do is it's going to select a certain area, a certain color vector within these points here, within your hue, which is basic color balance, saturation, how much of that color balance you have, how exaggerated it is or how desaturated it is, and luminance, how bright it is or dark it is. And you have these sliders. Notice we've got like the, all the colors right here, your RGB color and down here we've got our saturation so right now it's on this kind of greenish color and you see that or I guess it's kind of turquoise and down here you got this turquoise slider here that goes from fully saturated turquoise all the way down to like kind of desaturated and then here we've got luminance goes from dark to light so between these three here you can choose a specific color vector to color correct so it doesn't add a, like if you want to add green to these trees it won't add green to the entire image just to the trees so let's do this I'm going to go up to set color and you can actually remove colors and add colors here with the eyedropper, but you usually don't even need to use these two here because you can hit set color, move over, and you can put your eyedropper here on some green and click. And look what it's done. It's added like the kind of this shade of green here and this kind of range of saturation and this range of luminance. So what you've got here is this is the midpoint of the hue that was selected and then it kind of boosts, uh, kind of goes out a little further to let you, uh, to, to give, give kind of a, an open range of those greens and then this is the fall off right here. This kind of gradually feathers off the edge and it does the same with saturation, this range of saturation, this range of luminance. What this is choosing right now, let's go to this little color gray right here. If you check mark this, it will show your mat of everything that's being selected. So I haven't gotten a lot of the trees there. I didn't get a quite a big range. You can add colors by clicking on this. You'll have to go back off here. Yeah, add color and go and choose a different type of green. Let's try that right there and see what we get. And uh, still not getting a lot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mess with my sliders here. I'm going to grab my hue slider and kind of slide it around and look at the trees that it's selecting until I get a good section of the trees there. I'm going to increase this, but now we're starting to get his green pants a little bit, which isn't so bad, but I'm going to grab my saturation, open that up, and now that saturation is starting to choose a lot of trees. And what's probably going to even choose more is this luminance. And what I'm going to do is move this back and forth as well and find that center point on the concentration of trees, right about 
there seems to grab the most amount of trees. Now I'm going to grab my luminance, boost that up. Now it's starting to grab everything. So it's starting to grab green in the mountains and on the sides and in his pants and everything there. So I'm going to move this back and forth till I get kind of the biggest amount of green there that I can. Let's narrow this down a little bit. Try to concentrate mainly on the trees. You also have, right now it shows in color, uh, the trees that you are choosing. You can see the green here in the trees, and that is your mask. That is what it's going to be correcting and nothing else. You can also show this in black and white and color and black. You show color and black, it shows uh, the black what's going to be left out and the green what's going to be left in, the color that's going to be left in. Or you can tell it to show an absolute black and white mat. This shows you everything that it is going to be correcting, everything it's going to be leaving, leaving out right now. It's got all these branches. Let's see what we get by using that mask there. Also, you have a refine your mask here. You can denoise de your mask if you're working with compressed footage. This is red footage, so you won't need to denoise as much. And you've got a blur. The blur is going to soften the mat. See if we pull real extreme there, it really softens it out so it's not so hard edged. Usually you can just drag this over about a couple points, two or three points, and you'll get a little softening of the mask there, which makes it not such an extreme hard edged mask there. Now I can turn this off and let's go down to our colors here and see what we get. I'm See, because this is kind of all, this is like early spring before the, um, right when the snow had melted. So this is kind of, leaves haven't filled in yet. And uh, so we want to make this look a little bit more green. So what we can do is I can grab my, now, now this is your correction underneath. And the correction is just going to correct everything based on this mask up here. So if I grab this little wheel slider here and I move it over this way, look what's happening to the trees as I do that. Let me undo it. Watch this closely on the trees. Undo and redo. And look at that green that it just boosted. And this is actually a booster right here. And see how exaggerated you can go? I mean, that's way too exaggerated, but if you really need to boost a little bit more color into something, you can do that. This is like an extreme gain here. It's kind of similar to saturation, but it's like extreme. It just like This is a single wheel. You can also do this on an RGB mode as well. You can do it in the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. And notice uh, the midtones is what this slider correlates with right here is basically your midtones. It's kind of like all your colors in a, in a sense. Uh, but you can also do it in the shadows, the highlights, and then you have your gain slider on the side to boost it up and exaggerate it. But uh, quite nice there. So also under the correction you have down here, you have your typical sliders that you've seen in your lumetri panel. You see your temperature slider, your tint slider. If you grab this and move it around, you can see that, that the trees will change colors as we go over more magenta, more green, more blue, and then more kind of reddish. So you can kind of play with that and, and uh, get different colors there. But really, you can get almost everything you need usually up here and with your saturation. You have a contrast and, and sharpen that will sharpen the image. I don't recommend sharpening just like a specific portion of, uh, of a color vector. You usually sharpen your overall image and contrast as well. You can fix contrast in that area. Look at that as it gets more contrast in that area. This is really, really powerful. So it fixes it. If you need to add contrast to something like a blown out sky or something like that or on clouds, you can, the contrast slider will come in handy. Uh, saturation once again. Uh, let's take a look at the before and after here. I'm going to move up to the top of my HSL secondary check mark on and off and look at the difference in the trees there. Everything looks more green, probably a little too much. So let's say we also want to do another one. We want to do this, the sky here. The way you do that is you will need to add, this is all only kind of caveat uh, with uh, with using a lumetri color. You don't have to do this in, in something like uh, Resolve or in Speed Grade. You can simply add another layer and do another secondary layer and just work on that or a secondary node in the case of uh, DaVinci Resolve. So I'm going to go up here and go to my effect controls. I'm going to select this clip. On the clip here, I'm going to go down and find my lumetri color and I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to do copy Control C, Control V, and paste it. But I'm going to reset this one because now it's like doubled up. It's like doing it twice, so it exaggerates it even more. I'm going to clear this because I'm going to do a little bit on the sky here. So I've got this lumetri panel selected here. I'm going to go to the HSL secondary here. On I've got this one selected, so I'm working off this one and not this one. Actually, I could even rename this one if I want to, and call this one um, call this one Green Fix. Or we'll just call yeah, we'll just call it Green Fix. And on here, I'm going to name this Skyfix. So I know which filter I'm working with. We've got the secondary filter there. Now I'm going to choose Sky. Click, look at our mask. And same thing, look at that nice little chunk of Sky there. I can play with this a little bit and see what I get. See, saturation isn't going to change much because that is just solid blue there. It's kind of almost one shade of blue. But uh, luminance will probably, probably change it a little bit. Let's move that around get as much of that sky as we can. 
that's about as much as we can grab right there. I go white on black, and uh, so we've got some reflective sky hitting the mountains there. Uh, so I'm going to blur this a little bit, and I'm going to mess with this just a bit, see if we can kind of get rid of the blue on the mountains. And it looks like we can't. We, we, if we shorten this a little bit, we can get a little less of the sky. And there we go. Uh, and that's going to be enough. We won't really see the, the blue hue in there anymore. And let me blur that, blur the edges a little bit, and denoise the edges a little bit, and there we go. All right, let's turn that off and do our color grading on the sky now. We see just a sliver of the sky, but let's still give it a try and see what happens. As we move this over to the blue, look what's happening to the sky. It is intensifying there. It's really nice, sharp blue color there. Let's uh, now watch closely here as I uncheck our HSL secondary. There's the before. kind of looks almost grayish compared to to the uh, blue sky now. Now we click and look how blue that is. So now if you need to fix the overall shot, of course I'm going to go back to, you can you do it on either one of these. I'm going to go back to my original Lumetri color and go up to our basic correction. And let's add some contrast to this entire shot. A little bit of exposure to it. A little more contrast. And uh, let's take this a little more from the coolish or take, uh, the, make this not so warm, a little cool. And there we go. So let's turn these off and look at the before and after. So there's our before footage and there's our after footage. Cool little feature they've added there. The Lumetri panel is pretty cl close to the same, but this HSL secondary, this is something that people have been wanting in their Lumetri panel for a while. Uh, oftentimes this is like kept me from staying within Premiere completely for some smaller projects. But now with that added, I will stay in Premiere for some smaller projects and uh, the Lumetri panel works really, really well. It brings over the speed grade uh, functionality and it's a really powerful color correction feature inside of Premiere.